This video is the second video in the series of this shovel head breakdown uh, to repair an issue in the top end. On this side, we have oil pouring out the exhaust port. And this side, we got a click up front. If you haven't watched the first video with the carburetor and gas tank removal, I highly urge you do so. Just click that little link that's going to be right up here. We continue on the next part of the series where I'm removing this bracket and this bracket uh, connected the carburetor to the head. It's like a manifold here, but it's uh, sort of like a rubber dampener. I'm gonna remove this first, and it is held by two hex nuts on each side. You may have a different bracket on your bike. And we could just see it's just a, a, a rubber tube, just like that. We're going to remove the other side as well. Wow, look at that. This one has some oxidization on this one. We're going to have to take a closer look. Here's what we got. We got those, those two brass rings. I got the screws back in them. The rings are in good condition. Those are just fine. I've got the manifold that I've pulled off. Uh, this is in good condition too. That's just fine. And all of these will go in the box with the carburetor. This is not alarming, but it's worth noting, and it happened on both sides. We could see, as I remove these rubber rings, the oxidization around the heads right here on the mating surface. And it tells you that moisture was getting in to cause that. Now this could be easily cleaned up, of course, and new rings could go on. I'd like to see something besides rubber, or maybe uh, treat this with something uh, so that moisture can't get in here because it gets in it oxidizes uh, Causes air to get in and we can see that that does cause an issue These should be inspected uh, now and again to make sure you're not having problems with these seals This is a, a often a, a problem that causes a uh, vacuum leaks lean condition that you hear about in this area of the bike This is it right here. You're seeing it I'm gonna move this throttle cable out of the way No need to have it here on this side of the bike, all I really have is uh, spark plug cables and spark plugs in the heads as well as this T-bracket here that goes into the frame center support. So there's not a whole lot going on. I'm going to pull the spark plug cables now. I'm going to leave the plugs in as to not contaminate the engine while I work. In the next step, I'll be removing both exhaust pipes from the bike. The exhaust pipe will disconnect from the bracket in the rear over here as well as from the single bolt coming off the head. My rear one does not have a standard bolt and I've never had it corrected, so it is uh, kind of strange. Everybody has a different type of exhaust system. I happen to have this set up. I'm using a, a half inch. Take this one off here. Mine has a spacer in between. I just want it loose. I don't want to remove it yet. I want to take the screw off of the head as well, and then I'll remove this side. Now I'll go back to the bolt on the rear and loosen that. With that, I'm able to remove the entire pipe. Put that bracket piece back on the bracket so I don't lose it. This is the first time we're able to get a look and see up inside the uh, failure of the valve guide. There's a nice shot right there. The exhaust valve and you could see all of the oil that is encrusted around it this is as good as I could get the camera up into the exhaust port also see the uh, trannies leaking here right by the starter and I bet you I'm willing to bet that the uh, seal here is perfectly intact right with the uh, surrounding hylomar and I could probably turn these uh, with uh, just a uh, an extension and they just loosen up, and that's the problem. So I'll be loosening that bracket on the front exhaust pipe here. Just enough to get some play. And now we'll go to the front bolt. This one all the way back here, under the oil cooler is 7 16 I'll just remove that. It's hard to see in the camera, just way under here. And we'll support the pipe as I remove it. Here we go, it's out. 
Now we'll just pull off the rear bolt. Take off the whole pipe. And I'll put these back from the bracket into here so they don't get lost. And that concludes the exhaust system. Before I continue, I know people are gonna ask, be like, oh my God, Jordan, you did a video and you took off the carburetors and you didn't put paper towels uh, in the intake here. And yeah, 99% of the time I would, but I'm about to remove the heads. So um, I'm not really overly concerned. I'm about to contaminate the, the uh, intakes that I'm about to remove. But I will point out that in any other case, obviously, and I probably should too, just as a matter of good practice, removing these, opening up these ports here, I should be sticking paper towels in, not shop rags, and sure as hell not dirty shop rags, but clean paper towels stuffed in here. Our next portion of this breakdown is going to be the push rods, and we're gonna start with the covers for the tubes, and this is how we're gonna do it. I like to use my biggest screwdriver. I don't wanna damage this, um, flange that comes out of here. So what I do is I, I simply just put the screwdriver in like that. I'm just placing it in. I'm pushing down on this like that and just bring it outward and let that come back up slowly. And then I take this right out. Just like that. Do it again. Just put it in here. Push down. Let it come forward. Let that slide up. Take it out. I'm so particular about these. I've actually labeled these individually. You can see from the last build, this one is a rear exhaust and you can see rear intake and the other ones are labeled as such as well. I'm gonna start bagging this stuff up as I go along. Next, I'm gonna have two wooden clothespins handy, just like this. I'm gonna break the seal on these pushrod tubes, and pull it up like that. And on each one, I'm gonna drop a clothespin uh, keeping the clothespin out of the way, right? Like this. This one, break that seal, right? For the purpose of this next exercise, all sizes here will be 7 sixteenths. Now, if you have a kickstart like I do, what I like to do is rotate the engine so that the valve is fully closed and there is no stress on the lifter. Since I'm going to be rotating the engine, I'm going to be removing the spark plugs very quick. And there's, there's no oil fouling on this rear plug. Front plug looks okay too. So what we want to do first is we want to take the kick starter and move it so that the valve is in the closed position so that there's no stress on the system. We want the lifter all of the way down. So I'm going to rotate it now all the way down and I can pretty much approximate. There we go. So that, that's a good starting point. We're going to leave it right there. In continuing this process, I'll point out that if, if you look at the profile here, you can see that there's just not a, a whole lot of room to work on this so I would recommend getting a set of wrenches I have mine from Cobalt this is half profile so you can see that there's a considerable difference between this one and that one so it's this is the only one that's really gonna fit on this and allow you to get to the lock nut you can see this lock nut right here has a split in it and this is what we need to loosen first this lock nut in order to be able to turn and adjust this to make the push rod shorter to remove it. So we will insert this one here. So I've inserted this one here. Now I insert this one here and I will unfasten this just like that. And I will bring this lock nut all the way down to the bottom. I will continue to hold this in place so that the push rod does not move while I'm trying to turn this. But now I will take the wrench 
and take my time. Eventually, the stress from the, the lifter will be alleviated and I can do this by hand. Here we go. Now I am shortening the length of that push rod. I can already feel it flexing. It's bottomed out. Move this wrench up like that out of the bike. And here we are, the push rod removed as a complete set. It is of critical importance that you be made aware that there is an O-ring that is on top of the push rod tube that goes into the head, right? So if you don't see it, it's probably stuck up in there. Check for that O-ring. Also on the bottom of the push rod tube is also an identical O-ring. If you don't see it, it's probably there by the lifter. In this case, we could see the O-ring is still sitting in here. We're gonna move on to the next one now. There we go, all in one shot. And we can see on this one, O-ring came out on top, but the O-ring remained here on the bottom. That's usually the case. Notice that as I go along, each one of these is being packed up and labeled so I know where it came out of. This O-ring stayed up top. We could see that. And this O-ring stayed in the bottom. There it is. Again, O-ring stayed up top, O-ring on the bottom. Now I have all four rods labeled. I've removed uh, all four of the top O-rings that were sitting in the heads. The other four are sitting in by the lifters. Those are just fine for now. I'll remove those in a bit. We're gonna move on to the next section now. Oil lines are half inch, half inch on each side of the rocker boxes. Gonna use one to hold the other one to loosen. Same thing over here. There we go, that's just fine. Another half inch oil line right over here. Same procedure. Over here on the other side of the engine, we're gonna to start to break tension on the bolts of the mounts. And the middle one is 9 16 The outer ones are 11 16 I'll do the outer ones first. This one as well, which I just broke free. And these will come off. Once tension is removed, the 916 also has to come off because this beam needs to be removed. 
across here. I have another 9 16 nut under here that I have to hold in place in order to break this tension. So I got these two on the bottom, I've got a spacer in between here, there's a washer, and then this on top. I'll keep all these together so I could reattach them as I throw them in the box. There it is. Here's that little spacer. I'm going to point out something. This requires some pre-preparation during installation time. On one of these sides on the pipe, uh, you make sure that you grind down the end of that pipe so that it could actually fit through the hole and go back on one side. And in doing so, it's just enough that this side, where my thumb is, allows that to come out and you can remove this entire pipe by turning it, you see? And then you can pull it out like that, right? But you can see how this side has been uh, slightly sanded down so it fits in the hole, the recess that's inside of here. The other side does not have that. So it's an important note. And this is only going to work if it was installed like that. If not, the only way to do this is after you loosen the heads and you're able to uh, rotate them slightly, you're able to get this pipe out of there. And before I go any further, I'm just going to remove this non-standard bracket right quick. At this point, we reach the final stage of the head removal. The bolts that hold in the head are 9 16 Luckily, for the purposes of removal, you can use the standard uh, box side of a 9 16 spanner, right? Putting it back on is a whole different story, but taking them off is quite easy. However, a reminder, going from cast iron to aluminum. So when we slacken these bolts going through here, we want to do it progressively. So we'll take tension off a little bit this one, next one, next one, and go around and take tension off. Once the tension's removed, then just start dropping them down. It's okay. But initially, you don't want to just take tension off of one and then move to the next one. Do it like you torque it. And I'm starting with the front one just because I happen to be sitting here. That's it, just a little bit. Move on to the next one. That's enough. Next one. Now broke the initial tension on all of them. I will start over now from the beginning. Ideally, I could start with the one that I just worked on. Give it another turn. It's easier to show the work from the high side, so I'm just gonna show the work from here as a representation of all the, the bolts. They're now slackened to the point where there's no tension on, the, uh, on any of them anymore, right? So I could turn them with my hands. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work out all of them so they fall. There's one bolt. And there, there's no fun way to get them bolts out. And uh, I got them all out. You'll notice one is still sitting in here. And you put, you put one of these engines together. You better know which ones you got to preload before you put the jugs on. Because you're going to be in for a pleasant surprise come time to put the top on. And you can fit one of these bolts up in here because there's no clearance. But this is the one for the front that stays in the other four are sitting here on the floor and that means that this head is now detached before i pull it off there's one more thing i want to do very quickly there we go i just wanted to get some tape and some paper towel here to cover the uh, bracket for the uh, lower portion of the gas tank to protect the uh, valve cover now i'm gonna break the seal here there we go just like that carefully remove this from the engine Take a look. 
not too bad at all. This is not too bad at all. You know, there's nothing alarming about the front one. The front one has a tick inside the, uh, the, inside the valve cover. There's nothing wrong with the front one. We're gonna take a close-up look. There's nothing wrong with the, um, with the seal here, with the head gasket. Heads look good. Be cleaned out when it's inspected, right? But these, these aren't that old. So yeah, okay. Come off the tripod for a moment. A quick glance down inside. You can still see the cross hatching as I move the camera around. That, that silhouette that forms around the cylinder wall. Everything looks really fine. Piston head looks good. Let's bring the, the, the piston up and see what's what here. Hold on one second. Yeah, so there's some carbon deposits on the piston, right? It's a shovel head, for God's sakes. With an SNS carburetor. But yeah, this, this is not bad at all. I'll probably clean up the face too. Other than that, I, I really don't have any complaints about the, the front the front cylinder, front piston, um, the gasket. Nothing at all, except for that ticking in the rocker box. So that's all I really have to say about the front. We're gonna take off the rear head now. Uh, procedure is gonna be uh, almost identical, except for the fact that we're gonna just contend with this one oil line that comes up to the rocker box. Again, I'm gonna start with a loosening procedure for each bolt in the star configuration pattern, very much how I would tighten them. Last bolt in the rear will require the removal of the shift linkage to gain access over here. Mine's half inch. I'm gonna have to take off this coil to gain access to the last bolt as well. Here's a tool that I'm going to use to get that back bolt. This is one commonly used for a uh, distributor bolt. We can see that it's offset, fits down nice as long as you move stuff out of the way, box style on the bottom, able to get in there and then use the ratchet to break it free. There we go. All the bolts are loosened now. None of them have tension anymore, so I have to go around to all of them and manually turn them out, which is painful and takes forever, as I've demonstrated before, but this is the only way, so. And there's the one here that does not come out. Just to be safe, I'm gonna uh, loosen the bottom of this pipe I can't remember if I had uh, brazed the top of this so it will push up and in and out of the rocker box. I can remove it beforehand, so I'm just gonna check that out. It's not gonna hurt. Better to just try it. No, it looks like it's uh, pretty much in there in each direction. I'll have to look at it later once I remove it. So I'll bring it down as far as it can go and then I will now remove the rocker box up and over that pipe. I think once I lift it up, I'll pull that pipe out and then continue removing the rocker box. I'm gonna break the seal. I'm gonna lift it up. I'm gonna try and get this, this uh, pipe out of the way. So let's break the seal first. Got the oil line off. Found at the last second, it would appear as though my seat bracket, the U-bolt, not seen here, but what these nuts are connecting to, is taking up the very last clearance needed to pull this rocker box out. So before I go and attempt it, as I could hear it tapping, I'm gonna quickly remove this U-bolt in order to take out the rocker box safely. Okay, now I've got the seat removed, and this is just fine, because the other work is gonna require the seat removal anyway. Let's continue. Now the rocker box slides out, no problem at all. We get a first look, and as you can see, it's very heavy to hold it like this, we have no more uh, carbon buildup than the one up front, and that is because oil has not really been burning 
inside the combustion chamber, right? It's been burning in the exhaust. We're gonna have a look at that now. We could see the oil that was collecting from the valve guide right here and coming right out the valve, blowing in the direction of the exhaust right here and into the pipe, right? So this is what failed on this side. Let's get that out of here now. Once again, we'll come off the tripod, do a quick glance down here. We can still see the cross hatching. Everything looks really nice on the walls here of the cylinder. We just have a little bit of carbon buildup in this piston head as compared to the front. Both will be cleaned anyway. And yeah, so that's what we got going on down there. Now I'll get these heads cleaned up and ready for transport for me to bring down to the machine shop for the next phase of this repair. I hope you found this video on the shovel head rocker box and head removal as part of a continued video on the shovel head maintenance and repair helpful and enjoyable. Stay tuned for more videos in this series. And thanks for watching.